conservationist to a native grass nut, as the people around me call me. I know when they're talking about me in the local community because when I walk in the feed store, the conversation stops. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, we're going to show you this drill. And uh, as I said, it is, uh, it is a good way to put seed in the ground precisely. Uh, we can, uh, we, you know, we, you're going to see another method we've used, uh, the bell buster, which is, we don't know, the jury is still out on how good that works. I think it's really worth continuing to use it. Uh, and you've seen the planting by hand. Uh, this uh, planting with a, the seed drill is a very effective way because why? You're not having to put out thousands of seed, but you're putting out a specific number of seed and you put them in, putting those seed at the right depth with the right amount of seed to soil contact. Now I can tell you, when you're planting, when you're planting with this no-till drill, you want to make sure you have good seed to soil contact. It's imperative that the seed um, that the, 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 the zone you're planting in is hard. I mean, it's better to be planting in that road out there than it is to be planted in a fluffy, well-prepared seed bed. Again, remember that. When you're planting with a drill, a native grass, you want a hard seed, a firm seed bed, not a, a bed like you're going to plant soybeans or cotton or wheat or whatever. You want something very firm. So, consequently, I do not recommend always plowing it for two reasons. One, you, you get too much fluff, and then you have to pack it down again, and let it rain and pack it down again. Number two, nature abhors a void or a vacuum. When you plow, you're going to get all kinds of good stuff to show its head up. In our area, I'm, not, I'm sure it's even more here, we have 500 seed per square inch. 500 seed, okay, so you plow, and you plow deeply, you're going to find some things nature may provide that are good, like woolly croton is great for quail, but you're going to find a lot of things you don't want, so what we do, and people say, oh, I don't mention the word, but we do herbicide, we use herbicides, you know. One of the, this was not mentioned by Aldo Leopold. You know, he mentioned the hoof, the master plow, the, the axe, the gun. We add to that good seed and using herbicide. Now, not much. We use it one time, maybe twice, and that's it. But you have to control the invasives to use a drill. Um, I know Tom mentioned in his talk, Tom, if y'all just plant into the, into the grass, we, maybe we are a little bit um, more, that type of person wants more instant gratification, but we, we try to hammer the invasives, especially the Buddha grass, the hair grass, and KR2. Uh, so we try to come up with a good control, and that may mean putting out herbicide in the spring, uh, up about May 15th is a good time you've got bahia because you have to let the seed go to the boot stage. You have to know when to put it out. And then you want to uh, hit it again in the fall when it's taking the nutrients down to the roots, translocating the nutrients to the roots. You hit it again. Use about the first time about a gallon of glyphosate per acre. And the second time, maybe not that strong. And then, and then, but how many times has this soil been sprayed with all kinds of stuff? So what's one more time, and then that's it. Um, it's worth doing that than plowing. Plowing, you got to remember, when you plow, you got 2,000 pounds of, of microbes. If you got healthy soil below that soil, when you plow and expose that land, okay, what are you doing? So you're not, you, when you take away the cover, exposing the soil and the microbes, 2,000 pounds per acre, uh, it is healthy, microbes per acre, to that elements. So I don't like to do that. I don't like to have that bare soil showing, you know, all the time. So consequently, hitting it with, with uh, herbicides and planting it, to me, is a, is, a, is a better method than plowing. And I used to own two farm equipment dealerships, so I, you know, I used to sell that stuff to, to plow with. And so what I've had a, a revelation, you know, and that is if you don't plant natives, it's better to, to, uh, to use uh, less tillage. This is a no-till drill we're going to look at. Uh, 
and it's no-till because you don't till it and it, uh, it also has a special hopper for planting uh, fluffy native grass seed in the middle. It has three hoppers, one for small seed, one for fluffy seed in the middle, and one on the back for large seed. We can use, uh, you can use one, of, uh, one or two or three, all three together, you, if, you can plant, if you want to plant three. Kenneth, anything I missed? Huh? Behind me. So a lot of people are probably going to ask, and we have some resources online, where do you get your seed? Okay. Good point. And I didn't mention WHF. I, when I told you earlier you don't brag on your conservation efforts, they'll haunt you. Well, when we found that we couldn't do it alone, we formed the Wildlife Habitat Federation. It's a group of interested people, landowners and others, who want to bring back the prairie. We started with 200 acres. We're now working on 40,000 acres. Uh, from goes the Lagrange sectors down to the prairie, down to the Atwater Prairie Chicken Preserve, down to East Bernard, all the way down to Edna. Now, when we get places where we prepared and control the invasive zone, we plant it. Going back to Jaime's question, we use two types of seed. And John Riley, I don't know if he's, he's gotten here yet, but I talked to him about it. He agrees. Local ecotypes and the best germplasm you can buy from seed dealers. And I'm not, I'm not, a, big, I'm not a big fan of mixes, okay? I, I might use five types of seed, but when I see mixes, sometimes mixes mean a blend of what's left in the bin, or I can't, what's your PLS? I want to know what the PLS of every seed is, pure live seed content of every type of every seed. I want to know, because take away all the other factors you can, you want to end up with the best possible seed that you can plant and using, so we have a harvester, the Wildlife Habitat Federation has a, a new harvester, we harvest our own local ecotypes. And then we mix those local, local, you know, if it works across the fence, it's going to work on my side of the fence, huh? So we, we harvest our own seed. We mix up to 30% of our own seed, 10, 20, 30%, with what we want to get from a local seed dealer. Local, I mean, to be local. Um, you know, you hear, don't buy it if it's too far north or too far east or west. I want healthy germplasm. I agree, if there's a local dealer down the road, I'd buy from him most likely, but I get seed from all companies. I bought them all. But the most important thing is to mix that with local ecotypes. So, because the local ecotypes usually are dormant seed. They don't come up the first year. So if, you out, if Kenneth and I are out harvesting, and we're coming up with a little blue stem and uh, split beard blue stem and whatever, that seed is probably 85% dormant, so it's not going to come up your first year. Nature's going, what I say earlier, is going to come up, it's going to make something come up. So we put in that seed mix, we come up blend of those five seeds maybe, something that comes up quickly like green sprangle top to get a nurse crop going to cover that ground and uh, maybe even some of their little blue stem like Cimarron. And uh, then, you know, the other ones that was mentioned earlier, uh, fried oats or switchgrass, two types of, you know, it, all switchgrass, I, I like it all. The Alamo gets, tends to get real tall, but it still gives quick coverage. And then your, your local ecotypes come in the second year, or third year, they come in. Native grasses that typically sleep, then they creep, and then they leap. Okay. Uh, but anyway, that's where I choose. I, uh, the seed I buy, I have. I, I shouldn't show any preferences, but there's some companies that you know will ask me exactly what percentage of each, and I like to put, and that's who I order from that will mix that with my local ecotypes, or I mix it myself. We mix our own, um, get it in separate bags, perhaps, and. Uh, I like to put between the herbicides, you also might want to consider in the summertime planting a green uh, a cover crop, like soybeans or cow peas. In the wintertime, a cover crop of Austrian winter peas, wheat, uh, 
just bear in mind that some of this stuff may be aliopathic, meaning it, it crowds out stuff that maybe will want to come up, or you can't get rid of it fast enough to plant, so you might have to you've got a problem there. You're doing the cover crop with the no-till drill, please. Do what? You're doing the cover crop. I am. That no-till drill is a is a miraculous machine. You know, it takes some of my some of my failed failures away. It it, uh, it takes away a lot of the guesswork. That machine, I'll show you. It, it's set on planting around anywhere from uh, I say three quarters to half an inch deep, uh, and uniformly. So it will plant most crops, most any crop. And um, with the with the native seed, you want about half of it in the ground and half of it on top. Some of it showing, a lot of it, some of it in the ground. Of course, with the with you planting a cover crop like a cow peas, and most of it goes in the ground, stays down, covers it up. But the the no-till drill has a the front is for small seeds. You know, a lot of forbs are real small, switchgrass. The back one is for big seeds like corn or sorghum or. Uh, a couple crop seeds like, you know, cow peas. Um, any more? Yes, ma'am. Okay, the question was, uh, I mentioned that we have a, a Truax no-till drill. If you need a drill, where do you get it? We, um, we lease our drill out. We lease, we have, we have a, a lot of specialized equipment, and that's what we got to remember. Why are we here? We're not here for the organization. We're here to help people like you that need a drill, uh, or somebody that needs uh, some other kind of equipment. Nothing more impressive to a landowner than showing up at their front gate with a tractor after you talk to them. They said, yeah, I want you to help me. And showing up the next day with a tractor and a disc or a tractor and a drill. We do lease. It costs, but when you consider that drill, a new one costs $25,000. That's $3,000 a foot for each foot. It's a lot, lot easier to rent it, lease it from me than to go buy you a drill. huh? Now, there, there's a list on... Um, it's, we're updating it right now. It's called hmrtexas.net, and on that on that website, it lists all the equipment you can lease in the state. And then uh, they're getting another. They're getting a drill like this from a little bit better than ours, actually, here. And I don't know, but you have to check around. You'll find these drills. Yeah. Area. I was going to mention uh, following up with Jim is. is we have that drill is more important. So you're probably going to have to, if you read it from me, Kenneth and I are going to have to come and, and calibrate the seed so it works and get you kicked off. Then you can run it after we get it going. Yes. I'd say, well, first thing I do is you let your land rest. You know, Leviticus 25th chapter said, let your land rest one out of seven years. Let your land rest and find out what you got. What you going to put herbicide on? You may not need herbicide, but let your land rest. Then you hit, hit it and you then you read your land. You manage. What do I need? What kind of herbicide do I need? If I, need, if I only have... But hair grass, I only need Cimarron, Cimarron Plus, you know. So hit it with herbicide, then see what the impact was. Then maybe you want to burn it. Then you want to look, see what happens. Control, control, control is the three most important things. More important than planting. Planting, I can, any, any of you can plant, 
It's getting that land ready to plant. And then after you plant, I mean, after, I said to mention that, after you plant, the only time I shred is after I plant, if I think I need to. Why? Because weeds sometimes, where'd they come from, you know? You plant and these weeds come up, and it's not a weed maybe, it's just good weeds, you know, a weed is who's, a plant whose virtues have yet to be discovered, but these weeds come up and I don't need them because they're competing with my grass. Get the grass going, then you work on your forms. But you, if you sometimes shred it just the first year, you knock the weeds back and the grass comes through. So that's a good thing to remember the first year. First year now, not every year. Uh, shredding is not, I don't, I'm not a big fan of shredders. I sold a lot of them, but I'm not a big fan of them. Of them. Honey? Um, what is the optimal time to use a seed drill to plant, to, to sow seeds? Okay. In this part of the world? Uh, when it rains. <laughs> When is the best time to plant? Uh, I started planting in uh, late spring, early summer, and I hit it right on a few plots. I mean, it had some gorgeous, I mean, just really nice stuff out in front of my house. Planted it late May. Wow. Why did I do that? But I, that summer, we got rains. Many times, that is a bad time to plant. But if you got bahia, you want to plant after May 15th because that's when you have to wait for that plant to get to the right stage to kill it with herbicide. I prefer number one planting date for natives, January, February. Number two, October. Number three, late May. And you can quote me on that now. I mean, that's maybe not in, in official. I think that's pretty close to the NRCS standards. Why January, February, the planting dates for natives? Well, the, the ground is still cold. The seed is not going to rot. It's got the heavy pericarp on it. It's going to protect it. It's going because it's going to lie there until it's ready to germinate. Or so the ground gets to 70 degrees, 65 degrees, whatever, maybe. And so it's not going anywhere. So plant it when it's cold. If you plant it in October or later, and it, gets, it does get good rain and sprouts, then you might get winter kill. If you plant it in May, you might get summer kill from lack of rain. Um, so January, February, you have a chance of getting it up when it warms up and getting some more rain before it turns hot and dry in the summer. Does that help? Okay. Yes, sir. I can't hear you back. <laughs> My question is, uh, you only use herbicide to kill the bases, and you only use the drill with a bare slate, bare soil, and have you had success in existing plant, very plant communities We've had very poor results in the cities of our body. I'm just curious, have you, have you had success with the drill planting in a prairie and flying what is out the back of it? Okay, the first, uh, the, the question was, do, have we had success planting in what kind of conditions? Established prairie. Like Established prairie? Yeah, no. imagine you didn't herbicide that. Could you get seeds and the seed drill to work in this prairie? Well, typically, uh, the question was, would I go out and plant, use that no-till drill out here? You can't. You can, you can, get, because it has a culture on the front. It'll cut, it'll cut through that prairie. And make a make a, but but why? Why would you do that? If it's good prairie grass, if it's over 50 percent of more, I'd say prairie, good prairie grass, I won't I won't drill it. Okay. If it's like less than 50 percent, 30 or 40, you know, if it's coming on, maybe maybe not. I either start again, you know, and kill it and and plant it, or but it's so into prairie grass. I rarely do that. I would I would not do that, and uh, simply because it's uh, it's not economical. Usually, you, you know, uh, let's let it rest to see what's going to happen. But if it's, you're getting nowhere, uh, I would then I would let it grow up. Take, you know, no grazing policy for two years. See what you got, and then burn it and, and then herbicide it.
if it doesn't come up like that. Does that ask your question? Is that, is that on the... Well, sort of. I guess the question I've got is that when we have been seeds in our mining prairie, we've had very poor germination and recruitment. And I'm not sure why that is. And I suspect it's going to be the competition of the existing plant. And the success with your drill typically starts with bare dirt. No, okay. Uh, I have planted in, in not bare dirt, but plants that are dead, in you know, understanding. Okay? But you can plant in certain conditions where uh, you've got a, a poor stand of natives, yes. But I think the secret, have y'all ever used local ecotypes? Okay, collect your seed. Okay. Uh, and you got plenty of rain. Never plenty. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Uh, well, I can't answer it. I have to see it and, and try to do it myself. Yeah. Yeah, but I've planted in all kinds of conditions. We've had, you know, the good, bad, and ugly. We've had all kinds of, uh, we've had some great successes in places I didn't think were going to work. It's, yes, sir. The drill, it requires about a 40, 45 horsepower, but you've got to have at least one auxiliary valve to raise it and lower it. But the horsepower is about 40, 45. Yes. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't have a lot of draft to it. Um, it doesn't take a lot. It's just, it's, actually, it's, you know, it's eight openers with eight inch spacing. Okay. And I get more into the drill when we get out there, I guess, go into that. Okay. All right, one more question, and we're going to go into the demonstration. Yeah. You, first of all, uh, you, your question was uh, glyphosate. Yeah. Uh, it, it normally it's, it, it's, it translocates if it's healthy plant, not dry like we've had. With healthy, if it got plenty of moisture soil, it translocates the roots that day. It doesn't show up. I think you're referring to uh, residual of the soil. Yes. There is zero. No. Oh, thank you. See, our question was, is there any residual in the soil? Glyphosate? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wish there was an easier way. I might say, don't you? I do know people who use it in their ponds, around their ponds. And so I don't know. I don't tend to, I don't go whole hog, but uh, again, I'd rather do that than go out and plow, plow, plow. And uh, the other question. Oh. You don't have to. You don't have to mow it. You don't have to burn it uh, unless you just want it for cosmetic reasons. Because that standing dead plant provides some cover for that young seedling, you know, shade the, the, the humus for that seed, seedling coming up. So that's why a no-till drill was developed. The people up in the Midwest planting, say, uh, soybeans or corn in their wheat stubble. Okay. Do you add sand or something to it? You don't. And that's why this, you have to have this kind of drill. It's got a mechanism in it that, that allows you to use fluffy seed. Okay. It's called a fluffy seed box, and you can buy... Oh, I'll tell you all about okay. that. But okay. that's a good question. Thank yeah. you. Okay. All right, everybody, I'll gather around here. I'm the rest of them. What makes you determine whether you need a cover crop or not? Uh, 
think it's always good. Okay. Uh, if you get uh, what uh, what determines is if I have time to get it in, I always try to get one in because I don't like bare soil. If I have such a good kill that it, that uh, no forbs come up and it's uh, you know we've killed the, the Bermuda grass and it's just bare ground, I want something out there to protect that land during the summer. Okay, but you don't plant the cover crop at the same time as you plant the native seed. Oh no, no. That's I plant the cover crop in the summer to cover it during the summer months, and then I and then I might if I see the Bermuda grass coming back and I have to hammer it again to kill the Bermuda grass, and I kill it again, I want to put another cover crop on it, say Austin winter peas or wheat. Good, two good examples in this area to use to cover it in the winter time to keep it from being exposed, the ground exposed, and protect those microbes and earthworms and whatever in the soil. So I want to keep it something on that ground. The right, what I want to put on that covered the ground as long as I can until I'm ready to plant. The problem of putting a, the fall cover crop on is that you, you, you it might not die before you're ready to, to plant your seed. That's the only problem with planting something like wheat. Rye grass is a real problem. A real problem. I typically do not like do not like to see rye. Crop rye is aliopathic too. You don't want to plant it. So it kills whatever's under. So uh, the more cover crops, and we used to do that. When I was growing up on a farm, we planted everything. We tried to keep the land covered. We didn't know why. We just knew it made better, better, better crops. And you got the humus when you when you got the cover crops. You got the humus, all that put back in the soil. We have poor soils in Texas. So, uh, you know, you want to put more humus as you can in back in that soil before you plant the natives. All right, uh, everybody? Everybody ready? All right, this is, uh, this is our no-till drill. Uh, we've planted uh, in excess of 2,500 acres with it. Um, uh, we've had other drills we've used too. Uh, we don't always use a drill. We've used Bell Buster. We've used, uh, we've had some places we've just plowed and and put in the seed and packed it with a colorful packer. This is, we've had the best results with this. We've got some beautiful stands. Jaime's seen it in our, in our, um, in our uh, corridor. He mentioned the seven mile corridor we first went in with. Uh, we've done other plots since that time. have turned out pretty good. But uh, this is just one model. Uh, the Truax, there are other companies. But uh, these people are, are very, have a very good product. And, uh, you know, it's just one. It's it's a very expensive machine, but but they give good service, and uh, you can get repair parts for it, and for it, and they've been in business a long time. So we want some people. We're going to work with people that are going to be around for a while. What we're trying to do is determine how many seed to put in the ground to give us what I normally expect to have at least eight pounds PLS per acre. 810. I like to have more native seeds on the ground than most people. Many, many uh, people will say, oh, you know, you don't need that many natives. Uh, you know, a sparser covering is better. Uh, I'd rather have too many than too little. Why? I'd rather natives compete with natives. If you have to, if you have to have something to compete with, then compete with something like this. Because I can eliminate natives. It's I can't grow them. That's what the hard part is. But if you put out too many, uh, yeah, I, I know if it's dry, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll not make it. But I'd rather take that chance than to have too few and then let something I don't want come up. So we're going to basically, you think about this, you're planting, when you're planting, you, you, if you plant a, uh, a strip eight feet wide and run this drill for a mile, that's one acre. That's 43,560 square feet. Okay, so what you're trying to do is figure out if I have some machine here that's only six feet, that would take not 5,280 feet, linear feet, but it would take 7,000 linear feet to equal one acre. So knowing that, I've got, I've got to cover that distance with this drill to equal one acre. How many seeds am I going to put in the ground with each of these eight openers to end up with that seed count of eight pounds per acre? Especially if you're putting in a seed that has, that has a, 
all types of diameters. You know, you got seed of all descriptions here. You know, little blue stem, big blue stem, sidle scram up, you know, and some people put forbs out. I don't typically like to plant forbs or at the same time. I want to get grass up, and then I come back and plant my forbs. I don't want to be competing with forbs because what happens if you have to eliminate your forbs? Some, maybe some weeds come up and you have to eliminate the weeds, you might kill your forbs. So I like to get grass first and forbs later. You can always put forbs strips of flowers or flowering plants or forbs through your natives. Personal, I mean that may not be what a lot of people do. What you want a true prairie, you got a you got a mosaic of everything, right? But you can't have a, uh, that situation immediately. So get your grass up first. So what we're going to do, we're going to measure. We're going. We've already calculated this out. If we take three of these openers and turn that wheel so many revolutions, we know from calculations what that's going to be equivalent. It's going to tell us how many pounds per acre of or ounces we're putting out, and that's equivalent to so many pounds of bulk seed, clean bulk seed per acre. And then we can translate that into uh, PLS, pure live seed. So anyway, uh, Kenneth was is going to turn that. You'll wait, wait, uh, and well, the first thing we do before we, oh, I hate to throw away good seeds. Yeah, hey, I'll charge you for that. <laughs> uh, we, this is a little instrument we did have here. Uh, you know, about a hundred dollars for a little scale, and uh, we weigh three of these because we have three of these plastic bags to catch the seed from three hoppers. I mean, three uh, of these openers. And so we weigh this, I've already pre-weighed it, three of these weigh 11 ounces, 11 ounces. So I'll know when I collect the seed to deduct the weight of the bag away from what seed I collect. So 11 ounces, were, so you were ready, to, were ready to turn it. Seven uh, to be, uh, you want to turn that thing 13 times. He's going to turn the wheel. If anybody wants to look, you've got seed falling down these bags and these three all openers when he's turning it. That's what I'm going to use to catch, catch that seed. I'm going to measure that to calculate exactly. <laughs> My wife keeps saying, where are our bags going? I just bought those last week. <laughs> 13. That's, you got how many of that? 13. Five, both hand fingers and three toes, right? Yeah. You got the Okay. Oh, you got the other one? Yeah. You got the other one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right, I had to get where there's no wind. I'm sorry, I had to go around the side here where there's no wind. These things are very sensitive. Okay, I've got 42 ounces. Is that like you? 42? 43. 43. 42 and a half. 42 and a half. Okay, 42 minus 11. Is that right, 11? 31, okay, and in here, that is grams, I said ounces, I gram, sorry. Okay, divide that by two, and that's uh, 15 and a half, huh? So now it's set for putting out 15 and a half pounds of uh, bulk seed per acre. Bulk seed. That is, and you, and typically, bulk seed. Well, this with this this seed we got here is, uh, um, is about 60 percent PLS. So we've got nine pounds of PLS per acre. That's pretty darn close. You're in grams, you've got to stay in grams. <laughs> no, it's 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 it would be, but it's 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 the way we, the way this thing is because the number of turns. And dividing it by two. Now I can also turn it. We can turn it 29 and a third times and weigh it the amount. We can do that again. You want to do it again? We can do that and test how many. Do it on the ounce basis. This scale also measures in ounces. 
You know, and you want to do this three times. Yeah. Do it three times, make sure you're right. And you have to do that separately for each hopper? And then when you got these, we only use three hoppers. Yeah. Now, uh, when Huh? Yeah, nothing's coming in. Oh, right, you just put it on. And uh, while he's doing that, if, if y'all can do, I'll show you how, what do we do when it's not right? I'll show you how you change the setting on it. Y'all want to look at that? There's a lot of people here. We can walk around this side. Oh, I'm sorry. There he is over there. Where Kenneth is. That side. Go we'll walk around here. I'm going to get right here. Thank you. It's a good thing it it's a good thing it turned out like it did because we can't you move this chain right here on these sprockets. Remember when we, on a bicycle you I don't know, you, when I grew up we had we always were having to get the chain off our got on our cuffs right got in the cuffs our pants. <laughs> and that's why I learned to move chains. But this the more you move to the left, this chain you got you, you can move this chain over to your left to the different sprockets by just moving this idler up. And I can just pick this chain up and move it over to the next pocket. The more you go to the left, the more seed break you're putting out. If I ran into a problem where I could, it was just too much, uh, I would have, there's a, there's a, there's a, uh, there's an adapter you can put on this machine to bring it down to a, a lower rate. I frankly, anything under 10, I like. Probably a PLS. You ready? Tell you anything right here. Huh? Okay. It tells you the whole procedure right Yeah, the procedure's right here. Yeah. <laughs> you ready? Now you gotta do uh, 29 and a third. Okay. 29 and a third revolutions. We ready? You got the seed? Okay. Got that one, okay. Y'all watch him. I had to watch my German neighbors. All the people around me, uh, I'm the only person in the neighborhood not German. And one of the guys told my wife, he said, he said we really like y'all, what you're doing, but you know you'll never be accepted. <laughs> Great neighbors. They are. What a wonderful way. They tell you, they tell you like it is. I like that. <laughs> Thank you, sir. He's okay, but he's not German. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you what, that's thank goodness they're up there, though. They, they, uh, they, uh, they, the old timers, the old German settlers up in our area, they knew what horse meadows were. They knew what native grasses were. They knew that they were very essential. We, unfortunately, uh, we're losing them so fast. We've got to do something, and this seed program is going to help us because we're going to be able to take people's seed with our new harvester and pay them for the seed. And they, you can, we can pay them more for that seed than they can make on hay or cattle. Okay, so hopefully the word's going to get around. The harvester was donated by. Um, by a Quail Coalition and a tractor bought by Henry Hammonds, who is the, uh, the chairman for uh, Caesar Clayburg, and you know, $150,000 worth of equipment. But it, we got, we got to, as I tell people, we got to shoot to heaven and get earth thrown in. You know. <laughs> what you got? All right. It is exactly two and a half pounds. Minus, we got to let's see what's 11 in grams here. Minus one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, seven tenths. Point seven cents. Two point five is two point six. Two point two point. That's right on two point five. Minus seven. Two point five minus seven. 1.8 multiply that times 6.25 okay 
Hey Jim, can you let Aggies do this kind of calculation? Or is it... He is an Aggie. He's a, he's a, he's a range management scientist. Times what? Six. That's that's right. That's why he got he got the revolution down pat though. Yeah. On the wheel. Point seven point seven. Six point two. Okay. Two point six five times one point eight. I'll just check the math here. Eleven point two five. That's bulk pounds of live seed. Okay, good in an ounce basis. We came out with 11.25 uh, pounds per acre of bulk seed. So 11.25 times what I say, six. It's basically seven pounds. That's it, that works. Now we'll do it three times. You're gonna get a little range there, but we're that's pretty darn close. Pretty close. I mean, to where we want it to be. I, I, I was, I'm amazed that we're that close with that setting. Charge, basically get our cost back. You know, this thing is very high maintenance, and it costs a lot of money to take it down the highway, and and so it just whatever you want it, but. Put your money into preparing your seed beds and controlling your invasives. And uh, I don't think there's a piece of dirt in Texas, you know, that it's not, we can't find, well, east of I-35 at least, that we can't put, we store, you know, the tall grasses on if we work at it. Does the seed just drop down? The just seed drop oh, okay. The, the <laughs> Let me explain the process. I'm sorry. Okay. Up front on the machine, I, those back may not see it, but there's some coulters. There's some notched blades that open the soil. If you, it, but we, they don't really, you don't have to have that. That's just if you have a heavy thatch. One of the questions earlier was, can you plant in a heavy uh, uh, residue? Yes. But that, you don't usually know, normally need those coulters in front. Then the there are two discs that come to converge, and those discs come together and open the cut a V in the soil. Okay, and they're they're right they're right up here. And then around those, and then on each side of those two discs are spacers or depth controls. They are they're plates that keep that thing from going down deep in the ground, and they they allow the, the double disc openers to go down about three quarters of an inch. Now, the seeds don't drop at the very bottom of that three quarter, you understand. That just opens it up that much. The seed drop down through these tubes, depending on what, where, what seed, which box the seeds are in, they can be in all three boxes. You can plant three simultaneously. And when you plant three, you calibrate the first, the, the front box first, the second box next, and the fluffy seed box third. In that order. Okay? You have to do it in the right order. And then they got press wheels, these wheels in the back press the ground after the seed is dropped in that notch. The press wheels come along and press that seed hard into the soil. And I would not be opposed to, after you run the seed drill, come back with some roller or culture packer and pack that soil again. The, the more you pack it, the better chance of that seed having good soil contact you have. So press it. You know, you're talking about seed. This seed probably cost, uh, I bought this, and that's another reason to join WHF. We get special prices. This seed costs about $100, uh, uh, it costs about $100 an acre. 111 I think it was. And I, that same seed, I priced some other companies maybe five, six hundred dollars. That same amount of seed. Ah, uh, this company, this we had to be used. This is Bamert, Bamert from Eagleship. Bamert, B-A-M-E-R-T. But I've used Turner, I've used Bamert, I've used Native American, I've used all these companies. Are they're good people, all of them. Pro, Pogue in South Texas. They're, we got some really good fine. And what I get from them is their best germplasm that they got that was developed. From where John Riley is from the NRCS Plant Material Center. Uh, we use their seed sold and gone out by seed companies mixed with our local ecotypes. Okay? So. Yeah.
forward motion depend on your seat? Yeah, no matter what speed you run this tractor at, the, the calibration is going to keep up with that speed of the tractor. But we're pr typically you plant around five, six miles per hour. And and the seed, each of these, all these, all these hoppers are running together, and, and they're driven by that right wheel that he turned. So one thing you do, you, you disengage that wheel when you go and transport it from one field to another, because you're going to be planting road if you don't. You know. <laughs> so don't forget to disengage, and don't and don't back up with the seed drill. Never back up a seed drill. Okay. Don't make sharp turns with it. All these instructions. <laughs> We'll give you when we we'll bring it to you to plan. I have a question. Is yes. there any reason to believe that these techniques wouldn't be scalable to like Central Texas or South Texas or different areas where you want to plant grasses? Would they not be up? up uh, yeah, purple? I mean, I don't know. Is there is this a technique that's like specific to planting these five types of grasses here, or oh. or does it does it matter? What no, you this machine is made in yeah. Minnesota. Yeah. It plants anything from the Gulf Coast to Canada. You know, anywhere there's native grasses, and the back ones would plant. So, so this the, no, this was a this machine is a, is a combination of the best of all planters. There might be some better, but um, double disc openers were that was quite an innovation, rather than having just a, a plow to open up your furrow. Uh, uh, there's maybe better press wheels than this. I've used different types, okay. but for what we're planning, I think it's very good. Okay. What size project would you use this on minimum? What size what? Project would you use this on oh, minimum? Oh, I've planted uh, as little as a couple acres. Oh, uh, up to, uh, you probably plant 30 acres a day. Okay. If you really push it. But you got to start. Get, <laughs> got good land. Everything's ready. Everything's perfect. But typically, you know, uh, average size is probably 15 acres. Okay. But I'm still small. Uh, we have uh, Heidi wanted us. Heidi wanted us to come down and we planted actually some some grass down at, at uh, MD Anderson. Uh, some of you may know about. And we were going to take this down, but getting it down to the city, we we have another technique we use down there for small acres. We have a. a a, 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 another type of machine that pokes holes in the ground mm -hmm. and then we come and, and, and put the seat out by hand, have a hand crank machine. Uh, that's uh, the, the spike tooth hera to poke the holes and, and then we have a hand crank uh, uh, seed uh, harvester spreader. Thank you. That takes some muscle. Not, that's pretty light. <laughs> it's pretty light but it's... <laughs> How fast do you run this? Like three, four miles five miles an hour? An hour. Uh, about five miles an hour. Yeah, I mean, you, it depends on your land, it, how rough it is. Where are you putting fertilizer? You gonna say? Uh, no, don't put fertilizer. It'll, rot, it'll rush this thing out. And we don't need it for native grass anyway, because when you put fertilizer, you, you're helping the, the you're helping the stuff you're trying to control more than you are. Natives don't need it. Jim, how many did you say you had? Where do you keep them, and how often do they come available? What's that? These. Oh. How many do you keep? I have one of these. And where do you keep it? At my home. And is it turned off? Is it on? You pull it. Yeah. Well, uh, take it out. Of All right. Got to take it out. Uh, disengage it before we go. Okay. You got it? Go ahead. It's out now. What seeds are in there? Uh, little blue, big blue, uh, side oats, uh, ending grass, and I'll have to go back and look at my seed okay. tag, but some, so some forms. Okay.
Hey, Judy. 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 That's okay. I'm just filming for the group here. Well, no, you don't want it too deep. Oh, okay. You don't want to plant a plant much deeper than the than it's width. Oh, that's right. 